Good morning, brothers and sisters. It is a great pleasure for me, actually, to be here this morning. I am seeing it's a great opportunity for me to be here, actually, and meet you. Uh, I am also very glad to be part of this uh, committee and uh, this family. It has been uh, the only uh, forum that I able to share at least some of the things that we have been going through. As uh, Dr. Kevin introduced me to you, my name is Adam Haron, and I am from Darfur in Sudan. Uh, our country, it is uh, dominantly Muslim, and I guess I was the first in my uh, region to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But uh, then God has uh, gave, I mean, disclosed for me a lot of uh, things that we have been going through and the reason that we have been going through those situations until now. So the solutions that uh, God has given to us to come out from the situation our country is going through, it is only this book and uh, from these words. So uh, the point where I have accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior, uh, it was also connected me with the problems of our country. And uh, that was the turning point in my life to decide to take the word back to my country. It may be good and well with uh, our land and our people. So it was back in 2007, and I completely didn't know anything about Bible. And uh, that gave me a big challenge for me to go to learn Bible anywhere. By the grace of God, I got the opportunity to go to uh, school, and uh, many people worked in my life. Without them, I could have not been someone to stand before people like you and at least share the little I know from the Bible today. So thank you very much, Dr. Kevin, for uh, organizing these ones and inviting me to be part of this one. The uh, main uh, portion we want to share today, it is from the book of Deuteronomy. And uh, I want us just to read Deuteronomy chapter 6. Uh, I will read from uh, verse uh, 4 to 10, but I only want to take the emphasis from chapter 7, where Bible is telling us to teach our children and uh, pass these words to the generation coming. Uh, I will read, most probably my pronunciations of English is not good because it is not the language I grew up with. It is the language that I struggle to learn. But uh, you excuse me if you don't understand anything I said. <laughs> so yeah, Bible uh, tells us, I mean, or it reads, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your hearts. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you, when you sit uh, in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as a front, uh, frontiers or frontlets between your eyes. You shall uh, write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. These are the word of God. 
And uh, I was imagining the situations of uh, Moses at that time, being probably an old man, sitting together with the generations that was preparing to go to conquer the, pro the promised land that God has pr uh, prepared for them. But they were also the people who were uh, witness the direct involvement of God in the situations and the experience, both the blessing of God as they keep the commands of God, but also the punishment as a result of their I mean, uh, obedience to God's word. So Moses here, in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, is trying to revise and reorganize for them the thing is that they have already witnesses. So in verse, uh, in chapter six, verses five and four, I'm seeing the emphasis that Moses is trying to put on the name of God to organize the laws in the reference of the 10 commandments to centralize the loving and obeying the word of God and the commands of God. Uh, as he continued teaching, in verse seven where I am trying to put my emphasis because it is so much related to the situations we in our country are going through, he said, you shall teach them, and this what, this what, he is referring to the Bible, you shall teach them diligently to your children. Moses knew that this word are important to the people going to the promised land. And he knows that somewhere, as they may go and conquer the land, they will feel reluctance and enjoy the blessing of God. Somewhere they may forget what God said and maybe try to, I mean, uh, take the credit to themselves that it is we who do this. So Moses warned these people, his people, to pass on God's word to the generations after generations after generations, and these things they have seen will remain fresh into the generation that was going to come. This is equally important to us today. Uh, in my experience, so different, so different. Because the word of God we have here in the Bibles, and not only the word of God, I mean the word of God for us to study and know, but it is the word, it is the word that gives us life. It is the word that uh, keeps us in the peaceful environments or in the cursing uh, environment. It is the word that guides our life, and it is the word that also uh, gives us the directions to where we may not want if we disobey. So Moses wants his people to, to keep these words in their minds and also pass it into their, into their generations that is going to come. He said, this word that I am teaching you today or telling you today, you shall teach them diligently to your children. And we must, we must teach carefully our children this word today. Because if we don't teach our children today, they may grow up generations that will not know God and will not know God is what. And there will be a big gap between us people who know God is what and the generation that we are, we are raising. So uh, in our country, Bible has never been there. If I show you the, uh, the picture of my father, the first time he got the Bibles and read something on it, he was so surprised. He said, even the name of God, it is here in this Bible. 
in this book. They don't know that Bible is the word of God. And they don't know what is here in the word of in, in the Bible. They think that unbelief, because this is the oral teaching that has been passing through that Bible, it is corrupted book that uh, misleading people and it is it, uh, it contains people's mind that uh, defiles God's name. And that's how they grow up and re they rejecting anything related to the gospel so that they will not it will not enter there. But as he came and found Bible in um, in, in in my room and uh, by uh, sudden he opened and he was reading he was surprised and he said even in this book there is a name of God and that was the turning point into the entire of, of our family that all of them accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior when my father came and he acknowledged that Bible is the only word that has has is introducing true God to people. So I was so glad to hear that. And uh, our house, our home was changed that way to Christianity. Bible, to me, uh, remain a source for solving the problems, not only for myself and my family, but to my country. I continue doing evangelism in, among our people, and God has given me a special grace to be able to talk to many different people, uh, people on the ground, in the university, students in the schools, and different people, and thousands of them accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But there is only one exclamation people are making until now, everywhere I go. It is how late we are getting the Bible today. Why is it so late that we are getting the Bible today? People who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and they got access to study this book, they are so zealous to go and learn more and go to share with other people. There is one uh, testimony I think most of you may heard about the lady called Miriam. Miriam, it is, uh, she's, a, she's a lady, uh, the father is from Sudan, and the mother was from Eritrea. The father was Muslim and married Christian woman. This woman produced two ladies, Miriam and her sister. When uh, somewhere the father died, and the mother raised up her children, her daughters, in the church, and uh, they studied Bible. As she grew up, Miriam grew up, she was married to a South Sudanese man called Taban. Uh, in the process in 2007, in 2016, they said we are going to Sudan to visit our family and to and reunite with our family, of my father's uh, family. They came and they were coming to Khartoum as they reach into the airport, the brothers know that Miriam is coming. But they knew that Miriam was Christian and the husband was also Christian. What they did, they went to the police and reported that we have a sister who is a Christian and married to a Christian man. So before receiving the sister who was coming from outside to go and visit the family, she was received in the prison and she was pregnant. When these people ask, the authority of Sudan ask whether you are Christian, she said, yes, I am Christian. She was surprising that why this question is like that, because I am Christian, I grew up in the church. And they brought some people, giving her three days to repent and denounce the faith and accept uh, to become Muslim, otherwise she was going to be killed. And she said, no, for me, I am Christian. I'm not going to change. And then they kept her in a prison. They put chain in her hands and her feet. And the boy, he, she was having a boy, was sitting near her in the prison, in Kobar, in Khurtum. 
So she was sentenced to death by the court in Khartoum. But she was, uh, they were waiting for her to deliver. And then after that, they will execute the assassination. In the process, many people involved, but Miriam was remaining in prison with the chain in her feet until the time for labor came. They refused to remove the chain on the feet and, the, and Miriam delivered like that. People keep asking her, beating her to denounce the face, but she refused. After she uh, delivered, Deep, many people in, uh, in the international community involved and they put pressure on the authority in Khartoum and she was released. Uh, people from U.S. came and they took her from Khartoum airport and he, she and the husband went to U.S. Now she was uh, interviewed and here this is what they said. One person was asking, was it not easy for you to denounce Christianity and go free, and she said, if I denounce Christianity and I go free, my children will grow up and they will not respect me. But if I die, they will have history. They will have history. Uh, recently, it was in 2000, uh, last year, when I post in this group about the four men that were arrested in the church in Zalinje, and they were also uh, church with uh, apostasy. And apostasy is Muslim converted to Christianity. According to the law of Sudan, you have to be killed. And these four guys were arrested in the church. They were taken to police, and they were asked whether they are Christian. They say, yes, we are Christian. Now, they were asked to denounce, and they said no. They say, we are going to kill you. They say, kill us. They kept them in prison. They chafed their, high, their heads with the glasses, with the glass. They beat them thoroughly. And they refused to them water and anything. They kept separately from the other prisoners for uh, six days. But they refused to denounce their faith. Uh, I want to acknowledge that God has answered your prayers. And uh, these guys were released in the prison when the police in the Linje announced the freedom of these people and the freedom of their fellowship in the church. So the church was attacked badly and uh, many people were uh, celebrating that the church is closed and everything else. But at the end of the day, God uses that situations for them to announce now publicly that these people have the right to worship the way they want. And I tell you, it was the point that my, the city of Zalinje was completely transformed, and all the Christians who were hiding, now they join. And uh, I tell you, the church where we were living was attacked every night. People come and throw stones, and they come throw bones. One day, they shoot 10 bullets in my bed where I was sleeping because they were meaning to kill me, but God still protected me. I tell you that God is what? Are always faithful and are the only means to transform communities and the, and, uh, and, and the countries. This is just a testimony I wanted to bring. It's not rela related to what we are doing here, but it is just something that I wanted to tell you to know about what is going on in Sudan. Uh, going back to the, uh, I mean, to the portion that we are sharing, I just, uh, you know, put a, a headline of whether it is important for us to teach God is what, and how is that going to work in our life or to change our lives. In the book of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, I see Paul articulated the situations like, the scripture, the whole scripture, is the breath of God. And it is useful and profitable for teaching, for reproving, and for correcting, and uh, training in righteousness. 
so that the man of God may be complete and ready for every good work. This is what we are missing in our country. Since we don't have the word of God, how are we going to, how are we going to teach the nation? The, the leaders, people who are coming up into the leadership, they are the most ignorant people and the most brutal people. If you are not the most brutal people, persecutor who kills his brothers and sisters, you will never be promoted in our country. It is because people don't know God and don't value the creation that God has created. So they believe on a brutal power that they exercise on a victims. The thing in Sudan is like, uh, the, the, the community now is made up on that. Enemy and the victims. But the thing that is happening when, when enemy is celebrating, when, 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 when these people are celebrating on, the, on victimizing the victims, they will shout, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And also those who are undergoing their, their, their daughters are raped by men in front of them. Their fathers were killed. Their things are looted. Their houses are burned. They will also shout, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And Allahu Akbar means praise God, praise God. Or God is great, God is great. Now this great God is silent in all of this situation. So people are spiritually confused. They don't know what they are doing. That's, I think, the reason of our country or people in our country are now opening to receive spiritual answers. What is true and what is this God that we are, we, 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 we are believing on it? Because in all of these situations, it's silent. These ones who are killing, they are shouting Allahu Akbar. These ones who are being killed, they shout Allahu Akbar. And he is silent. What God is this? They miss the teaching of the word of God. And for those who become or who accepted Christ as Lord and Savior, those who accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, they now understand. They now understand. And they come back to, re, I mean, to, they come back to relax. And actually, most of the Christians from our country today, they think, thank God for this time. But they are also, uh, I don't know how to say this word in English, but they are like, you know, regretting for the time past that they have never, knew, I mean, knew the word of God and regretting for their families and brothers and sisters who are still in the darkness. That's why everybody wants to become missionary to go and share the gospel with, uh, their, with, their, with their family members. Only this year, we distributed over 290,000 copies of the Bible. And these Bibles that we have been uh, distributing were really not enough. And uh, what we do is we just give them to share to each other. We distributed over uh, 2,600 SD cards that contains Bible stories to the people. And I tell you, these uh, SD cards, micro SD cards, they fix in their phones. It's able to transform families and communities. So uh, the thing that has happened was brutal and it is still going on. It is really bad. Situation is really bad. And I want you to continue praying. Just, uh, yesterday they killed around uh, six people, I mean, say 11 people only by one bomb. The family member completely uh, finished in IDP camp called Niala. And uh, with the city called Fasher, where I just come from, it is also attack. And right now there is a heavy fighting going on. I want you to be praying for them. We have uh, over 400 house churches in those IDB camps and uh, in the villages, and we don't know what is happening to them.
it is this situation that Christians in, uh, in, in Sudan are undergoing so bad situations because they have now two enemies. One is this trage tragedy that is going on in the country, but it's still also in the community. They are targeted by the community members because some of these Muslims believe that even this problem is happening because of them. So the way they are looking at them, everybody is looking at uh, ways of getting rid of them, but I trust and believe God that he will protect his people whenever they are. Our people are lacking teaching. They are lacking reproving or correcting. No way because they have no source to correct themselves and to teach their children with. When we go to school, everything we learn from the schools, it is about hatred. It, to be a hero in our country is to be brutal. To be very bad. To kill people. And that is not the nature of the people of Sudan, but it is, it is a genesis of Islam. This is a genesis of Islam. Killing, stealing, looting, raping, I mean, thinking that you are, you are better and approve this one by the word of Quran, which they think that this is the word of God. So, as we have the Bible today, it is very important that we teach because even the uni peace universally will not come unless the people in the world will go back to the Bible and teach these words to the generations, not only children, but also to the leaders, people who are coming into the power to lead people with God's perspective because God has given, his, uh, given us his words so that he can guide us. In the book of Deuteronomy, as I am going to conclude, it says, and these words which I command you today shall be in your hearts. So uh, Moses wants his people to make their hearts a store of the word of God. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk them when you, are, when, when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. In all of this situation, in all the aspect of our life, as we walk, as we sit, as we talk, as we do, we need to have the word of God as a measure to measure every action that we are doing, to measure everything we say we do in our house, we do outside, whether I am alone, whether I am with people, whether I am with, fam with my family, whether I am with the friends, where I, whether I am in the school. The word of God must be the measure for our lives and we have to practice it so that our children will learn from us. It's some of, in some ways, uh, people who have the Bible today in their hands, the way they are, they, are, they are living is not reflecting what they are teaching people. And this is important for us to know. And uh, here he says, you shall bind them as a sign in your hands. So uh, our action sometimes is not also uh, matching with what God is really telling us. So it's important that everything I wanted to do with my hands, everything that, every action that I want to take, I have to measure it with the word of God. And uh, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and uh, on your gates. So in all of this, as I was seeing, like word of God has to be in our life as long as we live. And the moment we, the moment we go away from these words, it is the moment that we will completely go, ast go astray and whatever blessing that uh, God may give us, it will be destroyed because it is conditional. So the blessing God is giving us, it is conditional. For us to live in a peace, we have to 
measure our things and everything we do with the word of God. The more we go astray, and this is what I am telling people, if you go to Sudan or Libya or neighboring countries where we are living, where there is no Christianity and Christianity is rejected, even the environment, the weather, house, the weather up, up there, the rain, the land, not only people, but even the land, you will see is fighting against people. You will see is fighting against people. The weather is scorching. It's really scorching. You cannot sit in your house. You cannot sit in, sit in your house. Your animals are dying. Your, I mean, surrounding there is no peace. Things you make by your own hands, it will be taken away from you by force, by someone else. And situation continues. It is because people don't have the word of God. For us to have peace in our, in our planets, we need to keep the word of God and push it to the people. It is not only about salvation at the end of the day, but it is also about our living in this land, our living in this planet. For us to keep peace, God has already given us his word. And I think this is what I have to say today. Thank you very much for giving me opportunity.